Who is this group, uh, the Pacific Elders Voice? Well, the group are just that, Pacific Elders, who are voicing their opinions. Their members include former Pacific leaders. So we're talking Hilda Heine, the former president of the Marshall Islands, um, Tommy Remengasau Jr., the former president of Palau, um, Anate Tong, the former president of Kiribati, and Anele Sopawanga, the former president of Tuvalu, as well as Dame Meg Taylor, who is the former secretary general of the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat. So they are an independent alliance who are seeking to offer advice um, and guidance in order to strengthen Pacific resilience. And they do that by addressing issues that are facing the Pacific now, but also into the future. And they're a really important and obviously well-respected group given their pedigree, but particularly given the challenges of the Pacific Island Forum with the Micronesian bloc um, seeking to leave that, that group, they really do provide a united Pacific voice that advocates for Pacific peoples on Pacific issues. Well, the big issue for Australia has been the security deal between yeah. Solomon Islands and China, fears that this will lead to a Chinese military presence in the Pacific. The, the US is concerned about that. But what does this group say is the, is the real <laughs> issue here that we need to be worried about? Look, this group hasn't reinvented the wheel. Essentially, what they have come out to say today is the same thing that they have been saying for years, that the biggest security threat that faces Pacific nations is climate change and that insecurities caused by climate change, we're talking rising sea levels, we're talking about catastrophic cyclones, are being felt by Pacific peoples right now and that is a more pressing issue than you know, military tr um, tensions and geostrategic tensions as well. So they are really calling on international parties to listen to their concerns when it does come to climate change. They also said, and as you heard um, from Prime Minister of Solomon Islands, Manase Sogavare, that there is an anger a, and a frustration that Pacific nations, Pacific leaders are not being listened to um, when it comes to their own sovereignty and also when it comes to, you know, strategic um, policies that are going to affect the region. So when we talk about the Pacific, obviously it's huge, it's vast. When we talk about the land, sea and exclusive economic zone, it makes up an area that is bigger than Russia, US and China combined. And so you can understand why a lot of countries countries, Australia, Japan, the US, have strategic interests that work into the Pacific. The problem is, is that they're trying to gain their influence without consulting Pacific countries. And that's what I meant with Sogavare saying he, how, how, how angry he was that he heard about the AUKUS deal um, by reading it in the media rather than being consulted by, um, you know, the people who are involved as a Pacific leader. And I think that that's why the Pacific Elders Voice have so much um, voice in this particular um, conversation because as former Pacific leaders they would know that the consultation probably hasn't been happening in the past and so that's why they're saying now that you know Pacific countries they have their own sovereign rights they need to be listened to and they need to be involved primarily as the ones who develop you know strategic policies that are going to affect their land and their people right now. Tell you, has that issue been forgotten in the global conversation right now? I don't, I don't know if it's been forgotten as much as it has been pushed aside because, you know, these leaders are in, in the Pacific Elders Voice group are some of the front global leaders when it comes to climate change and demanding climate action and ambitious climate targets. You only have to look back to 2019 at the Pacific Islands Forum in Tuvalu where I think a lot of people will remember the comments made by Anele Sopawanga, the former president of Tuvalu, who was asked to kind of sum up his interactions with Scott Morrison um, at that conference and it of course came after Scott Morrison picked up that coal in the parliament and said don't be worried about that where he said that the conversations that he was essentially having with the Australian Prime Minister was that you know you're focused on the economy and saving that and I'm focused on saving the people here in Tuvalu. And that is, I think, a really important case when it comes to climate change, because unlike, you know, foreign aid, foreign development, where, you know, international influencers can just throw some money at the problem, mm -hmm. climate policy relies on domestic policy. It's up to countries like Australia to make really ambitious targets. And so, obviously, the Pacific countries hold other countries accountable. We know that China is the largest consumer of coal. They have... Um, 
pledged, you know, by 2060 that they will um, have net zero emissions. Australia is saying that they'll achieve that by 2050. But, you know, when we're talking about 30, 40 years from now, these mm -hmm. are issues that uh, Pacific countries are dealing with right now. And there has been a lot of pressure on the Australian government to pretty much say, hey, do you reckon why a lot of these countries might be moving to China or losing stead or, you know, Canberra's losing stead in the Pacific is because you're not listening to them on climate change. So I think the Pacific elders voice the statement they received that they released today it's kind of just echoing what they've always been saying in the hopes that I guess the tides are turning and maybe people will actually start listening as you know Pacific issues become more on the forefront in the Australian collective communications. Talia Althea thank you so much for breaking it down for us thanks for your time. Thank you.